Hey everybody, Stephen Joy here. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've uh, made a video, but I'm starting to get adjusted to my new schedule. So I think I'll be able to get back to making videos again. But uh, yeah, this video, I just wanted to discuss this, Arms Law. Uh, this is one of my favorite games, Rollmaster. I think this thing is just absolutely amazing. But I wanted to talk about it not as the Arms Law game, but I wanted to talk about it as a way to uh, make your D&D 5e game or your OSR game more hardcore. And just this book, not the Rollmaster rules themselves, although they're awesome. But what I did when I used to play this game is I used to use Rollmaster to enhance my D&D game. And back then it was a little bit more complicated because, because you didn't get bonuses to hit like you do now. The roll over method it used to be the roll under, you know, with negative armor classes and that sort of thing. So you had to kind of convert and whatever. Today I think it would be a lot easier, especially with uh, five, 5th edition. Because 5th edition, your uh, heroes have bonuses to hit, which this system is based on. So... I will get into this more and show you. And as an interesting note, this is actually what got me into Rollmaster, was I converted over and, I, and uh, with my group, we started using these rules with the D&D, &D, the first edition, or yeah, I think it was first edition D&D &D we used them with, uh, to enhance the game. And it made the game just absolutely awesome. And so we decided to try out the entire system, and that was just amazing. After that, it was just, it blew us away. So we played that for a long time. It was great. So yeah, I'm going to show you, uh, I'll go through this, and I'll show you how to convert it over and use it for D&D 5th Edition or else for uh, an OSR game. So you could use Swords and Wizardry, you could go use, use uh, Old School Essentials, that sort of thing. And this, in my opinion anyway, super enhances the game. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is caution you. <clears throat> because using Arms Law and Claw Law with D&D &D makes D&D &D a lot tougher unbelievably tougher <laughs> it, I would I would before just if you if you think that it would be interesting to use these rules I would recommend running a few games I wouldn't recommend incorporating in, into an existing campaign world at least not right off the start you should have you should try them out maybe run a game or two see if your players like it see if you like it uh, because if you're looking to make 5th edition, for example, you know, a hardcore mode or something like that, this, whoa, this takes it to the next level. This will really make the game tough. Now, that was something I really enjoyed about it, and so did my players, but not all groups are going to enjoy that, and so you have to kind of be cautious. So that's just my ca that's my warning on this is that it really does make it tough. And by the way, I'm not associated with ICE in any way. I am not associated with the company. I'm just a big fanboy of the game system basically. It's my favorite game. I actually prefer this to any other role-playing game. I just think it's great. I'm sure I'll be making more videos about it later. Anyway, that being said, this is my actual one that I used to play with it. It's in remarkably good shape. Now I went and put tabs on it so I could find things. I'm starting to regret that now. But I bought this new so I had no idea at the time that you know it would all become rare and whatever. I didn't think of it you know. And uh, so the thing is is it's in really good shape and I can't believe it as much as I used it. I also had a photocopy uh, version that I made that I used too and it's a lot more worn so I think I was quite careful with this but I'd say by all the tabs and stuff I mean I remember using this a lot and it's still pristine but anyway if you want a copy of this I've looked and it is available on drive through RPG again I'm not associated with the game I'm not trying to sell it but I am recommending if you want to try this with D&D &D, I highly recommend it because it's so much fun in my opinion anyway it makes it so tough and brutal and bloody that's a fun thing too so I will put it down in the comments 
a link to it on Drive Through RPG if you want to check it out. Uh, I think it's like ten bucks, so well worth in my opinion if you want to try it out. So anyway, as you know, roll D and D five E or the OSR or whatever generally uses a twenty sided die, right? But Rollmaster uses a uh, hundred sided die dice. So I don't know. I, I imagine everybody knows how to use it, but but you designate a, one color as your tens and another color as your ones. Roll your number. There, I just rolled an 8, because 0, 8, and I've got red being my 10s. So that would be a score of 8. There's a 40, because I've got my red again as my 10s, and my and my blue die is my 1s. So that's how that works. And then uh, uh, dice also, some of them have, you know, will have uh, uh, a uh, tens die. It's uh, more designated as a tens. You can tell easier. I'm used to this. I like I like just having two different color ten sided dice. They read easier to me. But anyway, that being said, let's get into it. So the way Rollmaster works is that it because it's percentile, you get bonuses of plus five percent. But you see, if you take a hundred and you divide it by uh, twenty, you get increments of five. So when you switch over to a percentile system, it's pretty easy. If your hero has a bonus of plus 3, in a 10-sided system, that converts into a plus 15. You just simply multiply the hero's bonus by 5, and that will give you the percentage bonus they have to hit. So what happens with, uh, we'll just take here, because I opened it up, we'll take a bare fist. I hope you can see this. We'll take a bare fist as an example. There are 20 different armor types. So if you do convert this over to 5th edition or you use uh, an OSR game, then you will need to convert armor class over into this system. And this just goes by the types of armor. So depending what, what the hero is wearing is what their armor class will be. So column 1... All right, I just lost that. We're gonna go with a we're gonna go with a javelin now. So armor one is if you're not wearing any clothes at all. In here it says defensive capabilities and combat. So this explains all the different. And now, I I like this better than the D and I know I'm being blasphemous here, aren't I? There's gonna be five E lovers just hating me here. <laughs> But I warned you, I like this game way more, even though this is really old. I love this game. So this has way more armor classes than you have available in D&D. I would recommend, it, like I said, if you start a game, a new game, just play a once over or whatever, just trying these out. Throw out the throw out the D&D armor classes, use these armor classes, because you have just way more options available to you. 20. You've got everything from cloth to skin, which is which is uh, uh, armor type one, all the way to armor type twenty, which is full plate. So you've got light hide, you've got robes, skin, pliable leather, uh, leather jerkin, leather coat, rigid leather, leather breastplate and greaves. The whole thing is uh, is just more detailed. So what you do is when you're going to attack your your character has their bonus and let's say let's say they have a plus 20 to their attack and let's say they're attacking somebody who's unarmed so that would be column 1 and what you do is you just roll your dice here i rolled a 74 and what did i say they had i said they had a plus 20 so in D&D &D terms plus 20 would be plus 4 see how that works 4 times 5 is 20, so you get a plus 20 bonus, so that would be 94. Is I would look on this table up to 94, because that's what I rolled. And at 94 I've got a 9 AP. So that's, a, that's code. This is very old school. <laughs> You're going to need to look up things up, but it's fun. Just wait for it, okay? So at 9 AP means that it's done this attack with a javelin, because that's what we're using here. You can see here it's with the javelin. Did 9 points of damage, and it did an A puncture. Critical. So the A, the A is for the severity. So the first, so you've got 9 damage, the A is the severity, and the P is the type. So then what we do is we look for the criticals, 
And this is another fun thing is that you have several critical series. You've got slash, you've got puncture, you've got crushing, and then you've got for large creatures, you've got different magic. You've got normal, magical, mithril, holy, and slaying. Same thing over here. So, but what you do is we got an A puncture. So what you do is you roll your percentile dice and you see what you scored and it's on a table of 100 and then they write in what's happened. So, oh, I rolled 100. So here we go. So this this guy, he attacked with his, with his javelin. He attacked somebody who had no armor on at all and this is what happens. Strike through neck, severe vein and artery. Foe cannot breathe. Foe drops and dies of a massive heart failure. <laughs> But so so <laughs> that's pretty brutal. That's not gonna happen to you. This is this he falls and dies of a heart failure. It doesn't matter if he's got if he's got 20 hit points, if he's got 30 hit points, if he's got 50 hit points. That's the fun of this system. Is hit points still mean something, but they don't mean nearly as much. <laughs> so like I say, it makes the game a lot harder. And the other thing that you that I had to address when when I converted this over and I used to play my OSR game was that uh, when you're attacking or when when you've got criticals like this you have to figure out how the healing works because normally in D&D &D, it just heals a number of hit points and as you can see that's not really gonna cut it here so what I had to do was was figure out a system of thresholds so you know uh, cure light wounds as opposed to uh, 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 you know, and I had the different, the various different healing uh, spells, and sometimes you'd have to do multiple healing spells to fix some of these problems. So that really weakened the healers in the game, and it just stepped up the game. You know, it made it a lot tougher. All of a sudden, you couldn't just save somebody by laying on hands and you bring their hit points up. All of a sudden, you're dealing with things like their heart has stopped. Well, what kind is that going to take just a healing spell or is that going to take multiple healing spells? Now, this is something you're going to have to figure out before you start using the system. Just carefully go through all the healing spells and figure out how you want to work it and make sure you explain it to the players so that they understand. That's the biggest thing. If you're going to try and incorporate this into your 5e game or in your OSR game, you want to make sure the players are fully, uh, you know, fully aware of the rule changes and how it's going to work and you want to make sure you're aware also so that's what i would caution now you may say oh just a healing will work and a heal will heal that and that's fine too with my green group we went a little bit uh tougher than that and uh and we we had that you had to have multiple in order to heal different things and we had it we had it sort of worked out i i don't have that anymore but i had made notes but you could just do a healing will fix these problems but eh, that doesn't quite feel right i mean this this thing is so brutal so let's do let's do another kind of attack here let's do a two-handed sword and let's say let's pick a different kind of armor here uh Let's pick leather. So that's column six. So this is going to be a two-handed sword against somebody with leather armor. So that's column six. You see that? All right. So that's column six. So we're going to attack. It's with the same plus 20. So let's see what happens here. So we have 50, 72. So against a 72, rolling 72, that's a nine, a st uh, stab wound. So, or eight, sorry, <laughs> I can't read. This is pretty small. I doubt you can see this. So anyway, it says 8AS. So that's eight, severity A, stab wound. So that's an S. So what you do, or sorry, slash wound. So what you do is you come over here, and again, we're on the A table. So, so this is a two-handed weapon against somebody wearing leather armor. Rolled a 36. So 36 is minor calf wound, foe receives one hit per round. So that's another thing about this, is there's a lot of bleed damage. So that means this, this person is going to start bleeding at one hit per round. Now that isn't something you encounter in D&D. Again, you're going to have to figure out 
how you're going to do it. Now, the way, way we handled it was that you could you could tie off the wounds, you could heal yourself. We we created uh, healing wounds, or yeah, uh, uh, heal or first aid is what we made for D and D, so that you could either do it yourself, but you'd have to break combat, or you could have somebody else do it. Again, kind of hard to do in the middle of combat, right? So this puts a limit on how long this hero can fight provided, you know, depending on how many hit points they have. So as you can see, it's a pretty brutal system. It does fit into D&D. If you're careful, it fits in very well. So the other part of it, because it is called Arms Law and Claw Law, is that you've got animal attacks as well. And same sort of thing, depending on what it is. Bites, attacks, uh, rams, you know, martial arts, strikes, tables... Uh, fall crush, so if you fall and whatever, depending on your armor. So some of the things that, or well, one of the things that's interesting with this is that, is that it's open-ended. So if, for example, let's go attacking the six again, let's uh, say that I rolled, let's say a 98, right? Because uh, I, I believe if you roll between nine, uh, 90 and 100, if I remember correctly. But don't quote me on that. Maybe 90 and 95. But you can do it however you want. Then that means it's open and it means you get to roll them again. So if I rolled a 98 and then I roll again, uh, then I rolled a 112. So the same thing, if I rolled 112, oh, plus I get to add my 20, so 132. Ooh, see now this is this is getting brutal. 132 because it's open ended. That's a 14 and a D puncture. So 14 and a D puncture. What's that gonna do? Uh, D. So as you go up, A, B, C, D, E, they become more critical. So let's see what happens when we roll a D. A 69. All right, so at 69, <laughs> this isn't going to be good, folks. Uh, strike foe in shoulder, plus three hits. All right, so not only did we do the, what was it, eight points of damage. Uh, so we're up to 11 points of damage. Foe is stunned and unable to parry for two rounds. Foe is at minus 25%, or 20%, sorry. Okay. So again, it's a little bit tricky how to incorporate the, or how to interpret this for D and D. But the plus three hits is just straightforward. Just apply that to the hit points. That's no problem. So you no longer roll for damage. You use the tables to tell you how much damage you did. Uh, foe is stunned and unable to parry for two rounds. <clears throat> now, normally in Roll Master, instead of instead of attacking you can parry and when you parry you roll your dice you add that uh, to your defensive bonus and the person uh, fighting you has to subtract that from their attack quite complicated quite old quite old school really so you could choose either you're going to ignore those kinds of things or you could try and incorporate it quite easily uh, you could you could allow your heroes to have a bonus to allow bonus, so if they get a say, say they get a bonus to their armor class, and this is how this is how I did it. I would have a defensive bonus for the D and D character, so fifth edition or whatever. Let's say you have an armor class, you figure it out, you know, you, the person has an armor class of six, but they have a plus two bonus to armor class. Well, plus two bonus, that's a plus ten percent, so their defensive bonus would be ten percent. So that would mean that normally. When, I, when this hero has a plus 20, because they're attacking somebody who has a defensive bonus of 10, they would only get a plus 10 to their attack. Does that make sense? So this is very this is very grindy and old school. If you don't like grindy and you don't like old school, then, I don't, <laughs> then you're not going to like this system much. But if you like that, then this is a lot of fun. All right. So that's how... I worked it when I incorporated this is is the bonus to armor class would be the defensive bonus of the defender and 
so then it says to parry for two rounds, that's easy enough, foe is at minus 20%. So minus 20, now you divide that by 5 is 4. So they would be unable to parry, that means no defensive bonus for two rounds. And during those two rounds, or what was that minus 20%? Actually, you know, that might be until they're hero healed. Mm. Uh, the the defendant is as at minus 4. Uh, that would be minus 4 to hit if you were going to use a 20-sided die. Uh, or you can just incorporate interpret it as minus 20% if you're going to use the bonuses. It depends how you're going to do it. But if the if you if you, the hero is going to attempt anything else, say saving throws or using, uh, 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 what do you call it, a feat or a skill or anything like that, then it would be minus four to the roll because you would use you would still use a twenty sided die for feats and for everything else, right? So that's how that works. And this is a pretty quick overview. But if you if you get this book, it's got it's got lots of weapons in it. Warhammer, fist, short sword. Never had any trouble using these rules with D and D. It takes a it takes a little getting getting used to. It takes a little finessing, but uh, but I think it just makes the game so much richer. And it's kind of a gateway into Arms Long or into Rollmaster because because there are a ton, and I'll go into them uh, at some other in some other video. But there are a ton of spells for this, thousands, thousands and thousands, and there are just there are hundreds of, of uh, classes and and options, and it's just absolutely an amazing game. So this got us playing that because then we started. Well, why don't we use the magic and incorporate that into D and D? And then once we did that. There was really no reason not to just start a campaign in this, and I did. I started in, a, and the campaign lasted quite a while. It was really fun. I had a great time with it. Anyway, so I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention, that this is an option if you want to make your old-school D&D or your 5e game a lot tougher, a lot grindier, a lot bloodier, a lot gorier, and, in my opinion, a hell of a lot more fun. One of the interesting things that came of this is way before it was a thing, I started in D&D, &D, I would narrate the wounds to my players. So my players, I would say, oh, you, you, you know, like, uh, let's say somebody got a really good hit against, against an orc, I would say, wow, you're you know, you slam your sword into the orc's skull, tearing his head right off. It goes flying across the room and splatters against the wall and slides down in a pool of gore, and you can see the blood pumping out as the light fades from the orc's eyes. <laughs> That's how I play. I narrate the action. And I never did that until I used this. When I started reading these, and there's so much fun... I started narrating the action myself in my D&D games when, when, I, when I started. Because I played this for a long time, and then we switched over to 2nd uh, Edition D&D. And in 2nd Edition D&D, I just kept narrating because I missed this so much. It just, to have that kind of stuff going on in a DD and d game is really a lot of fun. So I just narrated it. And so, you know, if nothing else, this is just really fun as sort of a, a learning how to narrate action and bloody gory details like that because it's full of them and uh, uh, you'll get the hang of it pretty quick I think anyway now now I know that that there are lots of DMs that suggest that you do that and I agree but I was doing I was doing this in the 80s <laughs> because of this <laughs> it was so much fun to do that anyway uh, yeah, so that's Arms Law. It's available on drive through uh, I recommend it if you want to turn your 5e game, if you want to make it old school, and you may want to make it really grindcore and really difficult and tough and a hell of a lot of fun and bloody as hell uh, without, you know, having to go to a whole different rule set or anything. Keep your D&D, &D, keep your D20. Just use percentile dice and do the conversion. It's easy enough. 
Or you can likewise uh, allow players or players can just use this and they can convert in their head because this is, uh, you know, that's the thing about a 20-sided die is it, is it is a 100-sided die in reality. It's just divided up into increments of 5. So 1 is 5, 2 is 10, 3 is 15, 4 is 20, etc. So there's absolutely no reason that somebody couldn't if they're, you know, if, if they want. I rolled a 14, so that's uh, 50, 70, right? Pretty easy. So, uh, and so you can you can just do that too if you don't want to use the percentile dice. I like percentile dice. It's a little bit easier. You do need, uh, if you're going to roll on here though, it is, you don't need, you can do that if you want, but the th nice thing about the percentile dice is that then you get into the nitty gritty details of the different numbers, you know. And then on the critical hits table, of course, you will need to use percentile dice for those uh, 20 sided because a 20 side, well, actually, no, you could, you could still use a 20 sided if you wanted. Yeah, you could because it's broken up in rate increments, so you could. Uh, four is a 20. Yeah, so. No sweat. I just didn't do it, so I never really thought of it before. But yeah, you could even keep your d20 if you wanted, and then incorporate this and just, you know, turn your game into a great bloody gore fest and have a lot of fun. Even if you just try it for a night or two, I think I think it's worth a try. Anyway, that's my video. Thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you next time.